Mm. Family, I know that many of you guys are struggling like me. You're dealing with some emotional turmoil with George Floyd being murdered in front of our very eyes. Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery. Uh, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. Um, I wanted to take this time to have a quick conversation with two of my favorite people in the world, my uncle and my father. And we're going to try to work through uh, what we're dealing with right here. Maybe just have a conversation that might inspire and encourage you and give you some guidance. So let me invite you into that combo. Yeah. Of course, I feel rage for this type of behavior that is repeated over and over. I've been the victim of it. Of course, they didn't kill me, but I've been the victim of police brutality. Uh, I've been followed simply because I was in a nice car. I've been stopped for no reason and quizzed. Uh, I have uh, been afraid for my life uh, when encountering police, but I saw it growing up and then I experienced it. And I now have come to the point where we have to channel our rage. You can't just be angry, be angry but you have to decide what you're going to do to make life different in this society. Just being angry, talking about it, it, you have to do all of that. But then what is your plan? And I'll just say the two things that come to my mind. Number one, protests are great, but unless a protest is designed to put the kind of pressure on the powers that be to sit down at a table and cut deals that make life better, all you're doing is putting a target on your back. They take pictures of the people who are doing the protesting and then they find them ways to harass them. Uh, that's been my experience. So that's why I'm not um, hesitant to say it. If all you're going to do is go out in the street and march, you've wasted your time. If you don't have a plan of action to make systemic change, you're wasting your time, but you have to have a plan of action. Malcolm wasn't all wrong and Martin wasn't all right. Mm. And both of them acknowledged that. Mm. Uh, you need to learn how to use the tools that are available and to acquire power to make the kinds of changes that need to be made. And I'll stop there and, and, and defer, but I, there's more in my mind to say. Yeah, and we want to hear what's on your mind. Pops, do you want to jump in? Well, I, I'm kind of a cauldron of emotions, uh, just like my brother. This is not new. Uh, we He didn't mention this, but we did grow up some of our formative years as children in Memphis, Tennessee, during the King years. And we saw Sherman tanks rolling up and down the streets. And we saw, we saw things that really made us frightened. At least I certainly was. Um, the two quick things I'm going to say is the book of Revelation, I read differently now. I do. I've preached before from Revelation 13 that America started out, you know, really like a lamb, really tender, great heart, and then became bad. That text doesn't even say that. In Revelation 13, it said it had two horns like a lamb. That's cute. But it spoke. And when you interpret or translate what it literally says, it is speaking like a dragon. And it's always spoken that way. America has been about money from day one, not mm -hmm. about people. I mean, look at how our settlers came here and settled in this land that, you know, they discovered. We know mm -hmm. the story. And then look at how this, this nation was developed. Look at how right now Trump clearly puts the economy over health. People don't matter that much to America. I hate to say it. And yeah. when you look at the philosophies of groups like the alt-right, what you're seeing now is the heart of America. This did not just come as a reaction to something that happened, that people are now acting like they're acting. They've been this way. This is who America is. And you all have had a chance to see it up close and personal. Now here's the point of conflict. And I agree with my brother um, that you can't just run out and protest and blow off steam. You know, mm -hmm. you haven't really accomplished much there. Uh, when you do that, we have to be a lot more strategic. And as Christians, we have a lot to think about. Because in the scriptures, we see where um, action, where you really took to the battlefield, uh, mm -hmm. is present. 
in making changes, both societally and in other ways. We also see how there are times when just to be um, quiet and demonstrate love makes a change. So it's going to require that we sit down and think about an approach that includes all of the weapons of our warfare, all of them. And we're going to have to start doing that soon in collaboration. I, too, have had a hard time sleeping, J.D. In my home, I know my wife is is a little out of sorts about what she's been seeing, too. It is in our faces, and it says to us something needs to happen. The other thing is we can't look for a savior. All of us have to do our part. Yeah. It And we need to seek the appropriate power to make change. Politically, locally, let me say this. Every black preacher in America should make sure every one of their members who are eligible to be to vote should register. Right. It should be our job as leaders of people to show them why they need to register and then to vote. I'm not yeah. suggesting we tell them who to vote for, but you've got to vote. You have to. If if voting wasn't important, there wouldn't be such voter suppression. Mm -hmm. You've got to vote. Now, the people who say, well, we never win. I'm saying this a lot these days. All you have to do is win three times out of 10, and you're in the Hall of Fame if you're playing baseball. Mm -hmm. Batting 300 is Hall of Fame. Wow. That means you fail 70 seven times out of 10, but you'll make it to the Hall of Fame. You got to put forth the effort. Local elections are just as important as the national elections. And we got to think strategically and help. So all of our members should register to vote. Number two, all of our members should be counted in the census. It's not up to somebody else to make sure our members get counted. We have to make sure our members get counted. And yeah. a lot of our members think, oh, it doesn't matter because we're so heavenly minded. We're not thinking about this earthly good. But we those two things are simple things that we can get started in in the black church. Third, we ought to be known in the community to be part of change in every way. That is to say, uh, local um, councils, and uh, they ought to know us by name, and we ought to be involved in the discussions that inform policy that affect the people we lead. We right. can no longer leave it to the, quote, leaders of any ethnic group or otherwise to do for us. We've got to get involved. And any, even if the church discourages it, Jimmy and I, like he said, we were in Memphis when King got shot. Mm -hmm. My father was across town in a meeting with Adventist preachers who were celebrating his demise. Mm -hmm. And then he had to get through the National Guard uh, in order to get home. So we've been through some of this. And, and we cannot disengage because of our anger or being tired, we got to get engaged. Young people want to. The problem is often they don't know how. I'm saying do the simple things and impact your community intentionally right now. You don't have to scream and holler and go on. Policy is what controls your life in America. You got to be on in the places where policy is made and make your voice heard. I would say that the moment is ideal right now though there there was a sense of futility that settled in you know after three years or so of trump that there's nothing you can do all of those systems that were in place to keep crazy presidents in check he was just destroying all of them and it seems like those who you would expect to be reasonable have lost their sense of reason and it mm -hmm. felt very frustrating and i think there was a sense of futility that was beginning to settle in but I'm kind of excited that I think emotions have been stirred to the extent that now people are moved to act. And those who are in positions of leadership, and I'm not talking about centralized leadership, where mm -hmm. we're looking for our Dr. King and um, Southern Christian Leadership Conference to give out orders and 
marching directives, but I'm talking about leadership that's diffused, diffused into the communities across America where you're pastoring and mm -hmm. where you're ministering, Jack, and where I'm ministering, where we're getting into action, exposing what's wrong in our communities, holding up a picture of what's right, and then applying pressure, economic pressure, and I'll, all the ways you can apply pressure, we need to start doing it to make a change. Where I am now, I went and talked to the mayor. I expect nothing out of him. Uh, the mayor in Apopka, but I went mm -hmm. and talked to him, made myself known. I told him we want to make a difference. We're going to be players in the city. I'm going back to him this week to mm -hmm. ask him, what do you have in mind to, uh, to deal with the problems that are, are making themselves evident nationally and mm -hmm. even in our area? If he mm -hmm. says nothing, the whole community will know he said nothing. If right. he says something smart alecky, the whole community will know it. We need to, get, need to expose those who aren't willing to do anything and who are bold enough now to put themselves out there. And then we've got to push to apply pressure. When I say strike while the iron's hot, I mean it. People yeah. are angry enough to act, but they will subside. Things, emotions will subside and we'll have the same scenes reoccurring over and over if we don't now stir our people to action that will make a difference. You're a leader, you're a leader, mm -hmm. I'm a leader. I would point to every pastor of every denomination, white included, and challenge right. to get right. on board and let's see, let's see what we're willing to do right now based on the ethic of the scriptures, the ethic of Jesus. Every Christian church ought to be acting and you ought not wait for GC to tell you what to do or anybody else. It's got to be diffused leadership right now. Everybody has got to do what they can do. And, J.D., you're going to blow up if you don't because you're angry. I'm angry. Man. Jack is angry. We're all angry. And we've got to act. But it's got to be intelligent action. The other thing about action, we can't do it for creating a name for ourselves. Right. One of the biggest problems in our community is people do for themselves by using the pain of others. Mm. We cannot allow that. Number one, we can't do it. And number two, when we see it, there must be, we must exact a price from them for it. For instance, mm. if the mayor decides that he's not going to help make a positive change the way we need it in our community, we need to see to it we get rid of that mayor. Mm -hmm. there, there must be a price that's paid. The other thing we've got to look at, we're going to have to deal with economics. We can't just deal with civil rights. We got to deal with economics. And, and those who are in power to let contracts and all of those things, they have to see to it that the appropriate amount of money gets to our communities too. And if they don't, they have to go. Isn't it interesting, guys, these racist acts that have stirred the community to anger are on the heels of the COVID virus, which has shut down our churches and the way we counted our wealth, our spiritual wealth or Christian wealth. These mega churches now are on the level of everybody else's church. Mm -hmm. You don't have a whole lot to lose by stepping up and telling the truth. Right. Um, when, when you have an empire to protect, you are more likely to um, coalesce with the king, no matter what it is he's saying. Right now, everybody is fairly poor. I'm talking now in terms of spiritual or Christian resources. Mm -hmm. The big churches are closed just like the other ones right now. Mm -hmm. And you've got to go out and fight for your share of the market, so to speak. So now would be a good time for people who before were afraid to risk their empire, to just join right on in, and they need to be talked to directly. That with CNN, for instance, I mm -hmm. am happy now to see some emotion being displayed, especially by the um, black, the black um, reporters and whatnot. Mm -hmm. It's it's not it's not now you know glossed over with all the sweet pretty language. There's crying right. going on. There are four letter words being used. As Christian, you know, we're not advocating that. But it just speaks to the level of raw emotion now and being real about what we know is true. A lot of people say if I was back in slavery, they'd have had to kill me because I wouldn't right. take it. We know exactly what you'll do by what you are doing right now. Right. And what will happen, 
Just like when Gideon was going, God said 32,000 is too many. These people will slow you down. Yeah. They will stop you from being effective. It's going to be a few people. Everybody is not getting on the bandwagon. Don't expect them to. Mm -hmm. But with God in the midst leading and guiding it, and we being willing to go out on the battlefield, I've seen God win battles that we couldn't possibly win simply because we were willing to walk out there at his That's command. Right. Yeah. That's right. So we don't have to have all the answers. We know the one who has all the answers. We just have to be willing to make the sacrifices necessary to make this world a better place while we occupy until he comes. Amen. Um, push us, catapult us, if you don't mind. Well, the first thing I would say is there has never been a you, there is only a you, and there'll never be another you. There, you are uniquely, you are unique in yourself, and God has put in you everything you need to make a powerful impact in this world. You've got to trust yourself that God can use even you to do anything. Number two, don't limit your sights. Mm -hmm. We need you to run for the Senate one day. We need you to get on the city council and make policy that makes a difference. We need you. So we've got to stop looking to other people to help us. We've got to help each other to help ourselves. And you already have everything you need to actually be the one that God uses, just like, Esther, Mordecai, I said, you came to the kingdom for such a time as this. Now, if you don't do it, God will find somebody else. Right. But you can do it. And yeah. you've got to, number two, don't try to do it on your own. You need the power of God in you. Yeah. You've got to develop your relationship with God so you can hear him when he speaks to you. And you will have an irresistible power in the world. Don't let the people who don't agree with you kill you. You've got to know what, who you are, whose you are, and then what God wants you to do. And I promise you, you'll get there. Just don't stop. Yeah. I, I, I want to co-sign that. J.D., if I can just co-sign what he said, and I love the way he said it. I've been saying that to pastors who are trying to figure out what to do during this time of COVID-19. Yeah. I can't tell you. I can tell you what God told me. And I can tell you how that's working out, but I can't tell you what God's saying to you. You've got to, at this particular time, dig deep, know that God is a God of revelation, that he's not trying to confuse you about what you ought to do. And there is a specific role that all of us have to play right now. It wasn't King alone. There are nameless masses of people who helped make the movement before a success. And everybody has a role they can play, and God will make it clear. And I'll just end with this, that there are certain settings that we're going to have to seek now so that the will of God for the, for the corporate body can become clear. Not just me in my study, but I take what I got in my study and I go into a setting where, in fact, I'm able to share it and light more fires. And together we're able to start a real flame going, a blazing fire. That's how it started at the beginning. Of course, we do know when King ended up being the leader of that movement, that bus boycott, it was when some preachers got together and they were having a long meeting and even King just wanted it to end. But in the midst of them coming together with the same purpose, trying to make a difference in the community, stuff was birthed that would not have been birthed in isolation. In fact, they said to King, we want you, let's have the young preacher to lead it. And so if we seek these settings and we can create these settings because God has given us some influence, where we come together and agree on the purpose, then things will begin to be birthed and born that will make a difference. God speaks individually to us and he speaks corporately. And when he speaks individually, bring it to the group and let's go ahead and get a movement started. We're in the middle of this thing, whether we know it or not. Maybe it's near the beginning of the middle, but we're in it. We didn't just enter this civil rights era. We just weren't very active, but now we all are aware We've got a problem that has to be addressed in this country. It's a race problem, which is a heart problem. But before the heart of the enemy gets right, we can get him up off of us a little bit so that we can develop our children, 
They can grow and be what they need to be. We can have ample opportunities to make contributions in society. And God will work on their hearts, especially if we do this in a Christian way, which includes aggression and it includes passivity. But let's let God be the orchestrator of this movement and let's get going. That's good. That's good. Well, let me talk to you who are watching, those of you who are tuning in. I need you to hear this. All of what was said today in this conversation that we had, um, we want you to take what was mentioned and we need a, you to hold yourself accountable. Let's hold each other accountable. Let's not do this alone. We're going to collaborate. We're going to do this together. But please use your platform. Use your influence. Use your time, energy, and effort. And let's see some change happen. Let's move the needle. Let's go out there and do what we've been called to do to be the, the change agents in this society. Um, I'm praying for you. I'm praying with you. Um, and at this time, I just want to encourage you to share this. Make sure that those um, who you're connected to get a chance to hear this conversation. So press that share button. And again, thank you for tuning in.